Hello, friends. I'm Pastor Pitts Evans. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. Let's get right to the Word of God. Isaiah chapter 49. Listen to me, you islands. Hear this, you distant nations. Before I was born, the Lord called me. From my mother's womb, he has spoken my name. He made my mouth like a sharpened sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me into a polished arrow and concealed me in his quiver. He said to me, You are my servant, Israel, in whom I will display my splendor. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing at all. What is due me is in the Lord's hand, and my reward is with my God. And now the Lord says, He who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and to gather Israel to himself. For I am honored in the eyes of the Lord, and my God has been my strength. He says, It is too small a thing for you to be my servant, to restore the tribes of Jacob, and bring back those of Israel I have kept. I will also make you a light for the Gentiles, so that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. This is what the Lord says, the Redeemer and Holy One of Israel, to him who was despised and abhorred by the nation, to the servant of rulers, kings will see you and stand up, princes will see you and bow down, because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. This is what the Lord says, in the time of my favor, I will answer you. And in the day of salvation, I will help you. I will keep you and will make you to be a covenant for the people, to restore the land and to reassign its desolate inheritances. Say to the captives, come out, and to those in darkness, be free. They will feed beside the roads and find pasture on every barren hill. They will neither hunger nor thirst, nor will the desert heat or the sun beat down on them. He who has compassion on them will guide them and lead them beside springs of water. I will turn all of my mountains into roads, and my highways will be raised up. See, they will come from afar, some from the north, some from the west, some from the region of Aswan. Shout for joy, you heavens! Rejoice, you earth, burst into song, you mountains, for the Lord comforts his people and will have compassion on his afflicted ones. But Zion said, The Lord has forsaken me. The Lord has forgotten me. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. See, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are ever before me. Your children hasten back, and those who laid you waste depart from you. Lift up your eyes and look around. All of your children gather and come to you. As surely as I live, declares the Lord, you will wear them all as ornaments. You will put them on like a bride. Though you were ruined and made desolate, and your land laid waste. Now you will be too small for your people, and those who devoured you will be far away. The children born during your bereavement will yet say in your hearing, This place is too small for us. Give us more space to live in. Then you will say in your heart, Who bore these children? I was bereaved and unbarren. I was exiled and rejected. Who brought these up? I was left all alone, but these, where have they come from? This is what the Sovereign Lord says. See, I will beckon to the nations. I will lift up my banner to the peoples, and they will bring your sons in their arms and carry your daughters on their hips. Kings will be your foster fathers, and their queens your nursing mothers. They will bow down before you with their faces to the ground. They will lick the dust at your feet. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Those who hope in me will not be disappointed. 
Can the plunder be taken from warriors? Or can captives be rescued from the fierce? But this is what the Lord says. Yes, captives will be taken from warriors, and plunder will be retrieved from the fierce. I will contend with those who contend with you, and your children I will save. I will make your oppressors eat their own flesh. They will be drunk on their own blood as with wine. Then all mankind will know that I, the Lord, am your Savior, your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. And so once again, God's servant speaks in this chapter. He starts out in first person, Listen to me, you islands. Hear this, you distant nations. So he's invoking all of the countries of the world. This is what he says. Before I was born, the Lord called me. From my mother's womb, he has spoken my name. He has made my mouth like a sharpened sword. And he goes on to say, you are my servant. Now, let me just pause for a second. Before Jesus was born, his father gave his mother his name. This says, from my mother's womb, you have spoken my name. An angelic messenger came and told Mary and uh, in person, and Joseph received the messenger in a dream. But the name Yeshua, Jesus, was given to them uh, while Jesus was in his mother's womb, actually before he was in his mother's womb. And so from his mother's womb, the name had been spoken. And then it says, he made my mouth like a sharpened sword. Friends, there's a very interesting verse in Revelation. It's Revelation chapter 1, verse 16, speaking of Jesus. In his right hand, he held seven stars, and coming out of his mouth was a sharp, double-edged sword. Isaiah says, he made my mouth like a sharpened sword. John, in the book of Revelation, said, out of his mouth came a sharp sword. And so the fulfillment of this servant is um, uh, revealed in Revelation and before. But there's much more about this servant that God will raise up. He's being raised up to bring salvation to Israel and salvation to all nations. Verse 4, But I said, I have labored in vain, I've spent my strength for nothing at all. Yet what is due me is in the Lord's hand, and my reward is with my God. And now the Lord says, He who formed me in the womb will be his servant, to bring back Jacob and to gather Israel to himself. And so this servant is going to bring back Jacob. He says he's honored in the eyes of the Lord. And then the Lord says, It is too small a thing for you to be my servant to just restore the tribes of Jacob and bring back Israel. I will also make you a light for the Gentiles, so that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. Now Jesus, friends, came on the scene. And the New Testament tells us that the Lord... Um, made Jesus to be this light for the Gentiles. It's expressed various ways in the New Testament, but I'll just choose one one verse for reference. Acts 13, 47, speaking of Jesus, I have made you a light for the Gentiles so that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. That's a direct quote from Isaiah chapter 49, verse 7. And so the Old Testament prophetic fulfilled in the New Testament and proclaimed in the New Testament, fulfilled in Jesus. It goes on to talk more about the Lord bringing the captives back to Israel, and he speaks of a covenant for the people in the day of salvation. We now know that to be the new covenant. The day of salvation, of course, was the, the day of the redemption of mankind, performed by Jesus with his sacrificial atoning death, burial, and resurrection. Isaiah says, they will neither hunger nor thirst, those who pursue God, those who come to the Lord. They will neither hunger nor thirst, nor will the desert heat or the sun beat down on them. And then it goes on to say, he will lead them by springs of water. Once again, this is fulfilled in Jesus. In Revelation chapter 7, verse 16, we read, never again will they hunger, never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat down on them. That's what we just read in Isaiah. And from Revelation chapter 7, verse 15, he will lead them to springs of living water. Isaiah said he will lead them beside springs of water. So the wording is slightly different, but once again fulfilled in Jesus in the New Testament. There's much, much more packed into this chapter. 
And because of the the format we're in, I can't get into all of it. But let me just say that the, the Jewish people reflected in this prophecy muse out loud that perhaps the Lord has forsaken them and the Lord has forgotten them. But God assures Israel that he could never forget them. He says, can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you, God says. And then he says these words, see, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Now, I just want to comment on that. There's no direct reference to that in the New Testament, but we know that Jesus was nailed to the cross. And this, the Gospels tell us the nails were put into his palms. Modern scholars have said that your body weight can't hold from a nail in the palms of your hands. Nevertheless, we have this prophecy from Isaiah saying, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. I believe that was fulfilled with the nails in the hands of Jesus at the cross in the New Testament. Continuing in Isaiah, all of Israel's will ultimately be destroyed. Uh, Those who laid Israel waste will be laid waste. And then he says this, uh, I believe, alluding to the marriage supper of the Lamb and the, the bride of Christ and Israel as part of the bridal company. It says, lift up your eyes and look around for all of your children gather and they come near you. As surely as I live, says the Lord, you will wear them all as ornaments. You will put them on like a bride. And so the restoration of Israel is compared to a bride decorating herself or adorning herself with certain ornaments and jewelry. The people of Israel regathering to the nation of Israel are described by Isaiah as decorations for a bride, for a marriage. And so the great sign of the restoration of Israel has been in play now for some 70 plus years. But nevertheless, the Lord speaks of a day when Israel will be decorated with the returning children like a bride wearing ornaments in preparation for her wedding. God goes on to say he will extend salvation to the Gentile nations again. Verse 22, see, I will beckon to the nations. I will lift up my banner to the peoples. They will bring your sons and daughters and carry them on their hips. They'll bring your sons in their arms and carry your daughters on their hips. And then it it continues with, All mankind will know that I, the Lord, am your Savior, your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. And so, friends, the Lord has not finished with his Jewish people. Like a, a mother with a child, he could never forget his child. He could never withhold compassion on the child that he gave life to. The Lord entered into a marriage covenant at Mount Sinai at the time of the the Sinai giving of the Ten Commandments and the Law of Moses. And the Lord has yet another marriage in view where mankind will marry Jesus, the Messiah, and the Son of God like a bride. And Israel is invited to the wedding feast, the marriage of the Lamb. So friends, you be a part of that as well. The Lord has extended salvation to me and extended salvation to you. May we all be part of that bridal company in the fullness of time. Lord, we pray and we thank you for engraving our names on the palms of your hands. We thank you, God, that you have been a light. You've been made a light to us and you've brought salvation to us at the ends of the earth. God, we're your people. We long for the day that will neither hunger nor thirst again. And never will the heat of day beat down on us. But Lord, you'll lead us constantly by springs of living water. Thank you, God, for our salvation. Thank you, God, for your suffering servant, Jesus, who has done these things in making a way for us. We bless you. We bless Jesus with all that is within us. Amen and amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.